everyone, it's Tahira, and today I'm super duper duper excited to bring you the video that I'm about to show you. Um, you see, I, you might have seen um, previous videos of mine where I've been um, showing off the Heidi Swap Mink machine, and it's really, really cool. You can use it with any kinds of um, pre prepared Heidi Swap uh, designs which have been created for you to use with the mink specifically, or you can create your own designs by um, printing off a design with a laser printer and then running that through the mink machine, and that will work too. But I'm a stamper at heart, and I really, really, really wanted to use this with stamping, and um, you're told that you can't do, but guess what? I have invented this super awesome, really, really cool technique to be able to do that with stamping. That's right, this rose here that you can see, that's been stamped, and it's been foiled. And this is not done with any photocopying, nothing like that. It's a really, really cool idea, and I'm so, so happy to be bringing it to you today. Um, you only need a few supplies, so let's get started. Right, the first thing I'm going to need is a piece of cardstock. This is Avery L um, Pure White cardstock, um, and the next thing we're going to be doing is just preparing that surface. I'm going to be using the EK Success powder tool to do that. So just as if um, you were heat embossing, you want to just prepare this surface. So make sure it's got a good coating of powder everywhere, and you'll see why very shortly. Okay, so the next step is we're going to foil, whoops, sorry, we're going to stamp that rose. And as you can see, it's that center, sort of most delicate portion that we're going to be foiling. Um, I'm going to be using this stamp set from Altenew. It's called Vintage Roses. Let me just zoom out for you a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. And I'm going to be doing this four step rose, and it's actually this image here that we're going to be foiling. So I've got my stamp prepared on my block. Let's just zoom back in. And I'm going to be inking that up with Versamark ink, like so. And I'm just going to stamp this in the center of my cardstock. like so. Right, you probably can't pick that up with the camera, but it doesn't matter because the next step is the one that's going to blow your mind. So we're going to be using some of this stuff. This is toner powder. Um, this is stuff that you would use to refill your toner cartridges in your printer. And um, you're not really supposed to be doing anything with it other than that, but I'm going to be using it just like you would do with embossing powder. I'm going to use it in a similar way, but to foil. So. Just going to set that to one side. Um, now, toner powder, I've read up on it, I've done a lot of research. It should be fine and safe to use, but just some safety precautions. Um, please use a well ventilated area. Um, don't have any heat sources sort of lying around nearby. You might want to wear a mask over your nose and mouth. I'm not going to bother, but you, if you want to be safety conscious, that's what you should do. And I'm going to be wearing a pair of gloves um, just to protect my hands. Um, if you do get any toner powder on your hands, it's not a big deal. Um, just make sure you wash it off with some cold water um, so that it doesn't uh, seep into your pores. Um, but toner powder is safe. I've done a lot of research. I've read up about it. It's not carcinogenic. Um, even if it does get onto your fingers, um, the par particle size is not small enough that it would go into your bloodstream um, or anything like that. So I feel confident that this should be fine. So anyway. I'm going to unscrew my toner powder. I have got a really small little scoop um, that I'm going to be using for this technique. Just trying to pick it up. <laughs> right, here's my little scoop. Um, this came from a cosmetics um, product. I'm not going to use it for cosmetics again, obviously, um, after this but it's a really useful tiny scoop size to be able to handle the powder. I'm just going to put on a, put a piece of scrap paper underneath here. And what I'm going to do is take a really small scoop of the toner powder and I'm just going to tap that on to my stamped image. I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to pat that in to the powder and you can see already that toner powder 
is starting to pick up the design that we have stamped. I'm telling you to tap it in and sort of pat it in rather than rub it because we want to minimize any of that toner powder being stuck on the cardstock when we do our foiling. Okay, so just give it a good pat and just going to take my gloves off for the next step because it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to take a brush, I'm going to tap my cardstock down and I'm just going to sweep off as much of that toner powder as possible. If there's just a tiny bit left on the cardstock, it won't matter, it won't foil, but obviously we're going to be doing some stamping on this afterwards, so we just want to try and keep that cardstock clean so that our colours are true. Okay, so that is ready to use. Um, just give me a second and I'll get my mink machine for you. Okay, so I'm back and I've got my Heidi Swap mink machine all set up. I've already turned it on and I've already heated it up to setting three. Um, the machine has beeped to let me know that it's ready to use, so let's get foiling. Um, I have got my stamped image and um, tonered image from earlier. I'm just going to place that onto my carrier sheet. Um, this actually started off as a 12 by 12 carrier sheet, the one that you get with the mink by, um, in the package. Um, but I've just trimmed it down, it's perfectly fine to do that. Um, and this just means that for smaller pieces of um, cardstock or whatever material you're using, it's going to just foil that bit quicker because it doesn't have to have that whole carrier sheet go through. Um, just makes it makes life a bit easier for you and a bit more manageable for your other projects. You can buy spare packets of these carrier sheets as well if you still want to have a 12 by 12 size to use for larger projects um, and you can have your other one cut down to different sizes for what you want to use it for. So this one's cut down to 6 by 6 I've put my image in there, um, I've put my gold foil on top and I've just smoothed out um, the foil to make sure there are no wrinkles and we'll just put it through the mink and see what happens. So it does take a couple of minutes still to go through. Um, so while we're doing this, I just want to let you know that this will work with any stamped image, obviously, um, and it will even pick up really, really fine detail. So your sentiments or your really fine detailed images, lines, etc., they will pick up just as a treat. Um, if you're going to be using any images and you're going to stamp first, um, I would just advise letting that um, stamping dry properly, give it lots of time. Um, ideally use dye inks as well because they will seep into the paper more than pigment inks and always prepare your surface with um, an anti-static powder tool just to make sure that you're going to minimize any um, toner particles that get stuck. Um, so while we've been talking, that has gone through the mink machine. Um, just going to lift up that carrier sheet and you can see that where we stamped and we tonered that image, we've now got a lovely gold foiled center of that rose. Isn't that fantastic? Right, we're going to complete the stamping of this rose, I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and ready to stamp the final layers of my rose. Um, I've got those images all, um, sorry, those stamps all ready on my acrylic blocks, as you can see. And um, we're just going to be stamping those in reverse order, so the most detailed image first, then the lesser, and finally the overall shape of the rose. Um, I'm going to be using some paper tray ink inks for this. I'm going to be using Sweet Blush for the main layer, Lavender Moon for the secondary layer, and the most detailed layer, Autumn Rose. So just going to prepare each layer at a time. Let's get stamping. So I've been watching the Alter New videos to just check how best to line up these images because they do take a little get of getting used to to begin with. Um, so I'm inking up my first one with Autumn Rose and you can see on the stamped and foiled image that there's a little notch here and there's also a little notch on this stamp as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line those up to direct our stamping. So just excuse my head if it gets in the way, I just want to make sure that I'm nicely in the right place. And that looks about right. 
so let's stamp it down. Okay, now we're ready for our next layer. This is Lavender Moon that we're going to use. Just inking up my stamp. And you can feel free to experiment with these roses with different colour combinations. They really are beautiful and work with a lot of different eye, a lot of different colours. Um, so for this stamp and this stamp, I'm going to be lining up these edges. Like so. And stamp that down. Our rose is almost done and you can almost see the shape of it as well. Uh, my stamping's a little off, that's because I can't get my head right over the stamping. Um, so our final layer is going to be Sweet Blush Ink. So just thinking up my stamp. And for this one, we're more or less going to be able to see where to line up our stamp, but it's about here. By the time you get to this stage, you can't actually get this very wrong, so I'm not going to fuss over it too much. I'm just going to stamp it around here. As long as you're containing all your other colours within that main shape, I think you're good. And there you have it. That is a stamped and foiled rose using Alton News Vintage Roses set and Heidi Swap Mink Machine and a clever little technique from yours truly. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see more of these types of videos, please let me know. Um, I would love to bring you more ideas from the Heidi Swap Mink Machine. Um, but in the meantime, I think this is going to expand your stamping possibilities and your foiling possibilities um, <laughs> many, many fold. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon next time. Bye!